Hey everyone, James here. Welcome back to another video. And today I want to share a little bit about my thoughts on gaming in moderation, because I've been trying to quit games for six years now and finally have reached a point where I'm understanding a lot more about the, the science, the psychology behind it. And I've learned so much that it's completely shifted the way that I think about gaming and I haven't experienced a single craving in weeks because the last time I stopped playing was maybe five or six weeks ago and usually by this point I'd be in the worst bout of cravings of say taking 90 days off gaming but now I am just not craving games at all. I don't even want them to be a part of my life and I genuinely think that this is the last time I'll be quitting. This is this is it. I'm finished with them. I want to give you guys some ideas about how you can go about making this mindset shift in your own life and what this means for playing in moderation. Before I get into some of these life-changing mindset shifts and uh, some of the things you can do in your life, I thought I'd talk about my journey quitting gaming and why this time around is so profound for me. Because when I first quit six years ago, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. I just found Game Quitters. I'm sure most of you all know Game Quitters. And I took part in the 90 Day Detox and I experienced everything that people experience during those 90 days. I had intense cravings, and urges to play, severe depression, anxiety, stress. Can you even call it social reclusion? I don't know. I just wasted time on YouTube and Twitch and Reddit and then I was wondering whether I even want to quit gaming. Do I want to be a Twitch streamer? Do I want to... I, I was convincing myself that I wanted gaming to be a part of my life and I tried moderation God knows how many times over the last six years. Genuinely, I have no idea. And <laughs> for the last, last few months, I was struggling to get a hold of my gaming, mostly due to external factors and I think... Over the coronavirus period, I was subjecting myself to so much mental stimulation like social media, YouTube, Twitch, Reddit, and so many other different things that I'd kind of defaulted to wasting time and being unmotivated and undisciplined and not doing my work, which in turn led to like financial issues and all that stuff, which in turn led me to escape into gaming. And what has it been? Yeah, around about a month, five weeks ago, I made the decision to quit for the last time. The reason why this was so different to every other time was because it's been completely effortless. I haven't even deleted games off my laptop. I haven't even blocked, like, <laughs> blocked myself from downloading them. I could go and I could turn on my laptop right now and I could probably find a game launcher somewhere on the computer. Um, I should delete them because they're taking up space, but it has taken literally zero effort, zero willpower. I've had zero cravings. And even if I have the opportunity to play a game or I see something about gaming, I get no urges to play it. I don't want to play it because I just don't want it to be a part of my life. And that's pretty much the foundation of this video about moderation is you have to look at games in a different way than you've been conditioned to. You need to stop thinking them like there's some, like there's something wrong with you. And this was the most important part, I think. It's about this idea of having an addictive personality and that you're just meant to play video games. It's what you've always done. Firstly, there's no such thing as an addictive personality. It's just not true. Games are designed to be as addictive as possible. So it's not really your fault that you are addicted to them. That's not to say you shouldn't take the responsibility, it's not to say you shouldn't take any blame for it, but do you need to try and reframe the way that you're thinking about video games and the role that they have in your life? Because instead of viewing them as something that has potential upsides, that could bring some value to your life, as an addict, you have to examine them for what they really are. And you have to think about what role you want gaming to play in your life because you can always go back to playing if you want to. You can, genuinely. But knowing everything you do about gaming and if you've tried quitting in the past, 
and you've compared who you are as a gamer to who you are without gaming, how much more productive, how much more focused, how much more clarity you have, energized, happy, your relationships are better, all these things. And, and when you finally learn the truth about what games are and how they're designed to be addictive and how the fault lies with them and all that kind of psychology behind it and the science, you can go back to gaming if you want, but why in the hell would you want to? Genuinely, think about it. Why do you want to go back to gaming? If you're always in this conflicted state of mind, you kind of convince yourself, you go back and forth about what it is you want in your life, where you want to be in three years. Why do you keep telling yourself that gaming could be a part of that when you know deep down that they're not? This is a pretty big mindset shift to take on in one video. Um, and I don't know if it's possible to do in one video. <laughs> if it is, it's gonna be a very long one. So again, I'm gonna be making small videos, maybe a series about this, about shifting your mindset to view video games in a way that you don't even want to create them anymore. Like it, the thought doesn't even cross your mind. It's like, it's just an instantaneous decision like for you to stop playing games. And I wish I could just give it to you. I really do, but unfortunately it'll take a bit more time. Maybe I'll release a program or something, I don't know. But one example I like to think of is imagine you've been a drug addict for 15 years. And say you got off it. You've been meth free for five years. Are you going to tell yourself that oh, I'll just I'll just try a little bit on the weekend, I'll be okay. Like I'm only gonna do it after 3 p.m. on a weekend once I've finished all my chores or I can do it in the evenings once I've done my homework. Now apply that same logic to video games and it just, it seems fine. Like I'll just play video games after seven or on the weekend. But when you think about it like that in terms of a real addict with a serious problem, which is what you have as a gaming addict, then you need to consider whether gaming is something that you can genuinely have in your life without having problems. You have to think about that. You have to spend some time going through the, the processes, the systems about, I keep saying it, but shifting the way you see gaming because from the start, you're kind of conditioned to believe that you're the addict, you're the one with the problem. Not that games are causing these problems for you, not your addiction, but yourself. You're responsible for your time management. It's if things don't work with you trying to moderate your gaming, it's your fault. It's not the addiction, it's not the games being incredibly um, incredibly controlling and hooking and um, impossible to get away from. It's not their fault at all, it's always yours. The responsibility always comes onto you. It's time management, it's discipline, it's all this stuff. If only you, you see after a few months of not gaming, you start to have those thoughts back in your head of, if only I was better with my discipline and my time management, and if I had some accountability, maybe if I spoke to a friend or uh, hired a coach or something, I don't know. You think that things might be different, but in reality, that's just not true. Things aren't going to be different because gaming is so addictive and you're not at fault <laughs> for kind of being whittled down and forced back into the lifestyle of gaming. The only way for you to achieve the life you want, and you know this deep down, you really do, is to avoid gaming altogether. And it's not easy. It's taken me years, six years, <laughs> at least six years. I can't remember the exact date I found Game Quitters. But the only way you can do it is by trying, failing, testing different things, and ultimately reaching that point where you don't want them anymore. And this is probably the most important part of this video. So if you've sticked around this far, thank you. <laughs> and I hope you're enjoying it. But you have to think about what moderating video games really does. Because moderating video games doesn't make it easier for you. Because remember, gaming is a drug to you. That's all it is. It's an addictive substance that has control over your life. So when you're moderating, your brain wants more. <laughs> it's not satisfied with just an hour here or there, a few hours a week. 
it can't get enough of it. It just wants more and more and your brain will do whatever it can to get you to play those six, eight, 12 hour sessions every week and neglect everything else in your life because it doesn't understand what it needs to do. The brain doesn't understand goals and family and money and stress and all this stuff. All it sees is signals and gaming gives it a lot of positive signals and it just wants more and more of this. So when you cut out gaming, you're starving your brain of, I don't want to say dopamine because there's more to it than that, but you're starving your brain of this, this happiness. And that's why it's so tough to begin with, quitting gaming. And that's why after a couple of months, a few months, things start getting easier because your brain, it's a lower level of desire, basically. So things that were less stimulating before are now more stimulating, like art and music and design and hobbies and reading. But when you bring gaming back in, in moderation, your brain is like, oh my God, it's back. All I have to do is push you to go in a little bit further and just get gaming back into your life just that little bit, because it knows that if it can urge you to do an extra hour here or there, it can urge you to do an extra four, six, play three days a week, then five days, seven days, then suddenly your life comes crashing down again. But you're still gaming. You're still getting all this incredible stimulation every day. And that's all that matters. So you're depriving your brain when you're moderating. It might not feel like it. You might think that you're giving your brain a treat and that it's going to be okay just doing it here and there. But it's starved. It really wants more and more. And it's not going to stop until it gets it. That's why I never see anyone who's a genuine gaming addict quit gaming and then successfully play in moderation. It just doesn't happen. The people that successfully moderate didn't, weren't probably addicted in the first place, at least not to a serious extent. Probably just lacking discipline, time management, focus, goals, clarity, something like that. But the people who are genuinely addicted to games they can't moderate. They just cannot do it. I used to think that I wish I could moderate games. And I had to, I've had these thoughts so many times is, oh, I'd love games to be a part of my life. I miss playing them like Skyrim and God, I don't know, Dark Souls and whatever other games. But now, now that I'm in this new kind of mindset, I don't even want gaming to be a part of my life anymore because I know what's out there. I know that my life now, living in Thailand, amazing girlfriend, online business, all this kind of stuff. My life is so much better than it will ever be if gaming is even a small part of that. So even just a small part, that's like three hours an evening that I could be building a business or spending time with my girlfriend or learning Muay Thai or exercising or something, going hiking, doing photography. And it really was a transformational shift for me. Because once you see that gaming has absolutely no benefits for you, you realize that you're actually not giving anything up. Think about it. By quitting gaming, knowing that it doesn't serve you, it doesn't provide value, what are you giving up? Time wasting? Stimulation? Escape? Achievements? Time with friends? Don't know. Think about it. <laughs> what are you actually giving up if you quit gaming? Because for me, there are no benefits to it. None whatsoever. So when I finally made this last decision to quit gaming, it was easy because I'd internalized that it's providing nothing of value to my life. Nothing at all. And, and I can easily live without it. No problem. So that's my take on whether or not you play games in moderation. Let me know your thoughts. I'm sure there'll be a few. And let me know what your favorite thing about this video was. And if you did enjoy it and got something out of it, give it a like, share it around. Maybe someone you know is trying to moderate gaming and struggling. Obvious reasons, of course, now that it's <laughs> been made clear. But yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.